Hey guys, welcome to Large Scale RC Nation. Today we're going to be going over how to program your remote to dial in your servo for your steering, your throttle, and program in a kill switch. Uh, here I had a servo go out on me during the race and got this new high tack in. So let's go ahead and dial it in and throw on the new arm. Hey guys, today's video is inspired by one of our large scale RC Nation brothers, Chris Turcarelli. And let's jump right into this install. We just removed the stock servo arm and now we're going to throw on this aftermarket dynamite servo arm. So the first thing we're going to do on the remote is set back our trim to zero. So it might be a little bit different on your radio, but here I have uh, D DT2, which is for channel 2, and as you can see, the trim is slightly over here, so we're going to zero this out. And take it down to zero. And our channel 1. It's at left 64, so we're going to move it all the way down to zero as well. So now your servos will be perfectly aligned zero, no left, no right, no forward, no backwards. And so now it's set to zero. Now we're going to go to our endpoints under our linkage menu. We're going to go to endpoints and we're going to make these 100%. On both sides and we already have our brake setups and our forward so I don't need to change this but I'll put this at a hundred percent for now so we can show you on our steering servo so now it's set back to a hundred percent and now we can go ahead and set up our steering servo so let's go ahead and turn on our car so our radio's on, our car's on, and we're just gonna verify that it's working properly. And now that it's set to zero with 100, 100%, with your wheels straight, you're gonna go ahead and place your arm back on the servo in the best location as possible. That gets as closest to being straight. So you'll just turn just slightly till it slides right on, and then you can tighten down your hardware. So we will now turn off our car again and tighten up our screw. This way it doesn't put any strain on the servo itself while you're cranking down the hardware. And we will tighten up the bolt on the side as well. Now that our hardware is nice and tight on the servo arm, you can now turn your car back on. And now you're going to want to set your endpoints. Uh, as I said before, an endpoint is basically how far the arm extends. You want it to reach just the max throw, left and right, but you don't want it to overextend. So if your arm stops about right here, you don't want your arm to keep extending, which is going to burn out your servo. So you set that end point so it brings the arm back to the end of the throw on your steering arm without overextending it. So we'll go ahead and do that now. We can hold it to the left and keep pressing forward until it stops. And then I'm going to put it back about two. So at 98 was probably the max, and I'm taking it down to 96. So that way there's no extra stress. So now we're going to go right. And 
and it seems good right at 96 as well. So I'm going to do 96 both ways. And to fine tune, once you have this pretty much straight, you want to fine tune it with your turnbuckle or you can do it with the trim on your controller. So I like to use it here. This way, everything's pretty much equal. You can do it on the controller to fine tune it as you're going down the straightaway on the track or on the pavement and just line that up. So let's move on. So you're gonna dial in your throttle as well. You can see your brake and your gas. And you're just gonna watch the throttle linkage to make sure that doesn't overextend. So when your throttle is wide open and your arm's wide open, that's where you'll stop it. And with braking, same thing. You don't want it to overextend and push. So you're gonna set your endpoints. So that way you can see your linkage is not overextending. And it's nice and smooth. You can also fine tune your brakes right here. And now let's move on to setting up the kill switch. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to set your endpoints at 100%. So we're going to go to linkage menu, we're going to go to endpoints, and you're going to select whatever channel yours is plugged into. My kill switch is plugged in channel 4, so I'm going to hit reset, it will be at 100 on both sides. Once that is selected, now we're going to go to our switch selection. Let me just go ahead and put this to off. And now we have it set up to the different push buttons that are on this controller. They're labeled PS1 through PS6. And as you can see, there's a button here. We have PS1 down here. We have another button here. There's another button on the very bottom of the controller. And now we're going to select what channel that we're going to hook up our switch to. I want PS1. It's in channel 4. So now we have PS1 on channel 4. And if you do normal, when you hold it down, it will activate it. When you let go, it will stop. We don't want to do that. We don't want... A momentary switch so now we're going to click alternate so now when you click it it stays on when you click it off it turns off when the lights off that means it's going to kill your car when the lights on that means your car is ready to rip all right it's as simple as that if you want to click the switch you can see how it indicates how it's working 100 percent 100 percent all right that's all very simple install. Let's move on to the next one. Now for the Spectrum radio, I don't have one on me, but I have set it up for a friend at the race, and it's a very simple process. On the Spectrum radio, it has a thumb control on the back here, and you'll push it in to find the menu. The menu will pop up. It will have a whole bunch of different lists. I'll post it here on the screen. If I can find it, uh, you'll down towards the bottom, it will say channel select, something like that. You'll push in the thumbstick to hit OK, and it will tell you which channel you want to use. It will uh, have one already on there, so if you have channel 3, you click it in, and you can scroll between the different channels, and you'll select channel 4, click it in if that's the one that you have your kill switch on your receiver, whatever it's plugged into. And if it's on channel four, you click OK, and then you thumb scroll down once, and it will highlight the next menu selection. And this one will tell you what switch you want, just like on this controller. And you'll find what switch that you want on the controller. It will be labeled. And then from there, you will select that one. So say this is uh, number four on the Spectrum radio, you'll highlight number four button and then push it in and it will work right away. You click the button and it works. So I'll, 
I'll throw those menus up on the screen so you can see them and I'll circle them for you. And that's all you need to know as far as that. Before you guys get started on setting up your kill switch, you wanna make sure that your controller is completely charged, that your car battery is completely charged. That way you don't have any issues when it comes to troubleshooting and making sure that you have it set up correctly. If there's any more troubleshooting, post comments below and I'll help you through it. I hope this kill switch tutorial helped you out. If you have any other questions, please comment down below. Please hit that subscribe button, which will help me out. Click the like button and look forward to more videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.